welcome back to Splitter Wars Part 2. Today we are going to have the Allwood Musclewood go head to head against the Easter May 1222. So you are going to want to stick around. This is going to be an awesome show. That's what we're calling it. <laughs> As you can see, it's snowing. School was canceled today. The kids are home. We've been out here getting soaked, getting set up for this because I'm off work and we need to get it filmed. So we're going to take you guys with just a walk around intro of both of these machines, showing you the differences between them, just showing you the specs, how they stack up, you know, everything we could think of to show you. And then let's show them the setup we got now. <laughs> All right. So the way we're going to run this Easton made versus Allwood splitter wars is we're going to start. We have 15 rounds on each machine of shag bark hickory. Some of these are knotty. We split them up again. If this one has two knots, this one gets two knots. Similar diameters, if this, you know, so that it's a fair head to head comparison. So the first round is going to be 15 rounds of shag bark hickory. The next round is going to be a lot of maple and then a few other things. We've got a little bit of elm, a few pieces of oak, some white birch. It's going to be a little bit of a mix. But by the time we're done with both of these rounds, we'll have produced one third of a cord on each machine. So you guys will see how long it took us to run a third of a cord on each machine. We stacked five rounds on the log lifts to start. We tried to get the heavier ones. And then we've got rounds sitting over there that we're going to have to pick up and hand load. The two biggest rounds are going to start in the cradles ready to go but first we're going to run an empty dry run so you guys can see the cycle times on these machines so how we're running this instead of just doing the four-way wedge on these two machines on the all wood muscle wood we've got an eight-way wedge on the easton made 1222 we're running a six-way wedge i know that that's a little bit different but these machines are also a little bit different the six way on the Easton made has about the same size as the eight way on the all wood. The all wood six way is really big splits and I just didn't think it would be a fair comparison. Now, these aren't apples to apples machines. Right now, the current price for an Easton made 1222 is $11,500. When I bought my all wood muscle wood with this Honda gas engine, I bought it for $15,500. The new model of the Musclewood comes with a diesel engine and the price has gone up to, I believe, $21,000. But how this one sits, I bought it for $15,500. This was $11,500. So no, they're not going to be equal and we know that. But we're just showing you the differences between them here. So one more difference. The Easton Made 1222 has full auto cycle on it. So you hit both levers down and back. The Allwood Musclewood that we have comes with full auto cycle but we ordered it special with just an auto down and then you have to reverse the lever to auto back because we thought that would be safer when our kids are running this machine so that's going to be advantage easton made um, it'll show how important that auto cycle can be when you're working by yourself so for the first round with the hickory Rachel's gonna run the Easton made because the hickory is a bit heavier wood and we've got to pick up some big rounds. So I'm gonna give her the advantage of having the full auto cycle. I'm gonna run the all wood for the first round because when I pick up those bigger rounds from the back, I'm gonna to have to manipulate that lever to get the ram to retract to set it down. And round two, we're gonna switch machines. So I'm gonna run the Easton made and Rachel's gonna run the all wood and that just shows you know the difference between operators. All right, so we hope you guys enjoy this. You know, we do these series just so we can show you how these machines stack up to each other. And, I mean, we put a lot of work into this, so I hope you guys like it and have fun. So. All right, here's the walk around of the Allwood Musclewood Log Splitter. Allwood is built right here in the, our home state of Michigan. This is the Musclewood. The, ver the newer version of the Musclewood is a little bit different than this one is now. But one thing about the Allwood Log Splitters is they're all built on the same chassis. So his lower end, the maple, and then you have the oak, then you have the locust, then you have the muscle wood. They're all built on the same chassis. So this walk around will show you the size, the dimensions of those machines. The differences are the hydraulic pumps, oil cooler or no oil cooler, um, size of the engine, stuff like that. The newer version of the muscle wood has gone up a fair amount in price, but it also is now powered by a diesel engine. This is last year's version. And we got it with the 
non-full auto cycle valve. We ordered that specifically for us because that's what we wanted for our needs. The new muscle wood comes with a full auto cycle. So just keep that in mind. This is just showing you specs and dimensions of all wood log splitters and how they're built. All right, to start out, the hitch on the all wood is one piece. It's not a removable hitch. You cannot tow this machine from both ends. You only tow it from the front. That being said, you can hook up to this machine with your truck and you can be going 70 miles an hour down the road with this unit. It's got full torsion axles, so it has suspension. So that's one difference between this and some of the other splitters we've showed. It has the suspension, but it's only towable from one end. It's got, I believe, a 40 gallon hydraulic reservoir, which is mounted here on this plate, which helps tow. It keeps the weight forward, so it's not tail end heavy. It gives you plenty of tongue weight. It's got the uh, temperature gauge and the fluid level gauge on there. The muscle wood comes with this massive hydraulic oil cooler. We got ours with the EFI Honda IGX 700. They don't come standard with the uh, fuel injected engine, but we got that. And like I said, the new muscle wood comes with a diesel. The hydraulic pumps here on this version, it's got separate pumps for the log lift and for the wedge raising and lowering, which makes it run pretty smooth. I'm not sure how they come now with different models, different versions. It's got the 15 inch tires, a little bit larger tire. It's got the log lift here. It's not a floating design log lift or anything like that, but we'll show you the specs on that, the measurements of it. Um, it can lift a lot. Come standard with this work table. You can buy upgraded larger tables. This is a 23 and a half inch deep and about 44 inches wide. The wedge on this unit is built all the way through and to change the multi-split wedges out you remove these three bolts here, you remove the bolt here off from the lifting cylinder and then you would lift this off, drop the new one in, bolt it in. So it does take a little bit longer to change your wedges but it's a solid built to last design. The width of this wedge this is two inches wide so you can see this thing's built a little bit different this thing's sturdy two inches wide front to back is 13 inches granted there's the gap in there for the replaceable wedges the push plate on this unit 17 inches wide and 11 inches tall there's no replaceable wear surfaces in this push plate. The steel that Bobby builds these out of, he says you're not gonna wear out in your lifetime. So there's no need to grease this, no need to change the uh, wear surfaces. He tells me it's not gonna wear out. Bobby's been building splitters for 15 years, so we're gonna run it. And so far, I mean, we don't have a ton of time on it, but the thing's built, so. All right, as far as the stabilization system, it's just got this drop down leg. It drops down out of this table. You put a pin in it, and then you would use the jack on the front to put pressure on that, and it makes this unit pretty stable when you run it. Again, the trailer jack here, it's got the removable pin. It's an 8,000 pound support capacity, 7,000 pound lift jack. So. Plenty of, plenty of power in the jack to lift this machine off your tongue because it is heavy. Like I said, you're not moving this thing around by hand. <laughs> I, I, I'm a beast and I can't even pick the thing up, but that's part of the towability of this change. unit. You Quick got... change hydraulic filter here. I believe all of the hydraulic fluid fil runs through this filter every two minutes. It's got the battery mounted right here on the uh, surface. That's for the engine starting and for running the hydraulic cooler. It's got an external fuel tank. I believe this is a seven gallon tank. It's affixed to the machine. So when you fill it, you just fill it here. You don't remove the tank and go fill it, but it's not just the tank that comes on the engine. It's a seven gallon tank. Working height of this machine, 35 inches right here, about 34 inches to the base here. 
It's got this built-in V or cradle. So it's somewhat in between the Wolf Ridge and the Easton Maid. The Wolf Ridge has the flat table. The Easton Maid has the big cradle. This has just a nice built-in V to hold the log while the ram comes forward and pushes it through the wedges. Just to give you an idea, the length of this machine is a little over 12 foot, and that's from the end of the tongue to the end of that work table. And then the width of the machine, with the, not including the log lift, is just under five feet. So it's about five feet by 12 feet. So if you're looking for the size or dimensions of this. So again, with this being towable with a vehicle, you're not moving it by hand. You're not moving it with a four wheeler. I don't think you're moving this with a side by side. You're moving this with a vehicle or you're moving it with a tractor. All right, let's get it fired up. See how it starts, see how the log lift works and the wedge system. on this machine is just about a foot tall so 12 inches tall this steel here is three quarters of an inch thick and then the beam this is made out of two beams that run through and the wedge is welded down through so the combined width of those two beams is probably two and a quarter inches so each beam is three quarter inch thick steel that runs the length of the machine the log table on this is the working area 39 inches long and 16 inches wide. The foot plate on it is about 16 inches tall and 16 inches wide. So it's got a, a pretty good size log lift. The riding surface on this wedge, 15 inches long. And then the work surface on this one is 14 inches wide from that V. On the muscle wood, I'm not sure on all of Bobby's versions, but the muscle wood, the cylinder has a built-in dampening system. So when this ram comes back, because it comes back rather quickly, at the last like inch, it dampens it so it doesn't slam into the end of that cylinder, which Bobby says prolongs the life of these cylinders because it, it retracts so fast, so it lands soft. It's actually pretty crazy how it works. I have no idea how it works, but let me extend this out real quick and just show you how the push plate is attached to the ram. All right, so the back end of the push ram is mounted on this plate, which again is welded down through the entire frame. And then the push plate is mounted to it here. You can see it's got the bracing it's just got the, uh, I guess the clevis sort of with the pin through it that mounts it to the push plate. So there's just your walk around dimensions, a little bit about the all wood log splitters. Again, all of his models are built on the same chassis. He now offers a hickory model, which I haven't seen in person, but it's got a complete changeable wedge design. So probably more similar to the Easton made if you're looking for something like that. And that one's available with a box wedge as well. This machine, you cannot run a box wedge on, it's just the multi-split wedges.
All right, here's the walk around video for the Easton Made 1222. This is a 2019 model that I bought used, and I do know that the people I bought it from made a few modifications to it. So I'm not sure exactly what is bone stock on this, what they changed, or what's changed since 2019. But we're just going to show you what this one has. It's got 13 inch tires on it, it's a fixed position oh, axle. Go. 30 miles an hour from this end up to 50 miles an hour from that end. That's because on that end you have a lot more tongue weight. That's where the bulk of the weight of this machine is. Here's the hydraulic reservoir. It comes with the sight gauge as well as the temperature gauge. This unit comes standard with this oil cooler, hydraulic oil cooler. The filter on this unit is an internal filter that goes into the tank. I do know that this battery box here was added by the people I bought it from. I believe the battery is normally mounted inside the frame rail up there, but I bought this up in Canada and they wanted a little bit bigger battery for their cold starts. Here is how the rear of the hydraulic cylinder is mounted on this Easton Made 1222. It's got the clevis with the pin through it onto this mounting block. Again, this is the older version. This is the Honda GX390. It's a 13 horsepower engine. I do know that the Easton made splitters come with the Vanguard engines now. The hydraulic pump system, the push plate. This has phenolic wear blocks with brass plates in, be in between the phenolic. So it rides on the phenolic and the brass keeps it centered. It does come with this holder mounted on it for your manuals and any spare parts. It's got full auto cycle, come standard with full auto cycle. Raise and lower the wedge, raise and lower the log lift. To run this machine, it's, it comes with this jack that can be removed. So when you're gonna run it, you're gonna lower these support legs. Depending on the surface you're working on. So you just get that pin to lock in and then you're gonna lower it. This support leg was bent somehow from the people I bought it from. So here on the concrete, you can see it's not perfectly level, but uh, I'm not sure if they towed it with the leg down or what happened, but it did get bent. All right, so towing this machine, like I said, it can be towed from either end. This is a removable tongue. I don't know if the model has changed since 2019 or if the previous owners modified this, but I noticed this tongue that I have is a lot shorter than what I see other people have with their 1222s. To move this pin, there's a pin that drops in vertically, so if you forget to lock it or put the safety pin in, it's still gonna hold itself in. The safety chains mount to the eyelets, which are hooked to the frame of the machine, and you can use them on this end or on the other end. You just pull this tongue out, and then you can move it to the other end or put it in. I keep it on this end because it's easier to move this machine around by hand from this end because this is where your tongue weight's at. And then when I split, I remove this. All right, this comes standard with this aluminum work table, 23 and a half inches deep, about 41 and a half inches wide. The wedge system on these Easton Maids, this wedge drops all the way through the machine. It's got the support bracket on the back, which is welded down through the frame of the machine. When this pin, when you lift this wedge, this pin will lock into this channel, making it so that the wedge can't come up out of the machine. That's how you raise and lower that wedge. To change the wedge, you just lower it all the way down how it is now, and then you would pull this wedge out either by the eye hook or I stand up here and just pull it out. I'm actually gonna do that because for the next splitter challenge, we're gonna have the six way on this. The working height of this Easton made 1222 so this is 28 inches to the flat surface. And the top of this cradle is 32. So I would say your average working height is gonna be between 28 and 32, about 30 inches tall. The width of this cradle here is 22 and a half inches wide. This machine, the Allwood, the Wolf Ridge, all have 24 inch strokes. The push plate on this 12, 22, 16 inches wide and 17 inches tall. The wedge system on this machine, one inch thick, and then front to back is 11 and a half inches. 
the wings on the four-way 10 inches out each side so the total total width is 21 inches 10 inches plus one inch plus 10. all right so with with these easton made 1222s you can get different height wedges this is the standard four-way he makes a tall four-way also you can put a box wedge on this machine and which so we have a box wedge we have a six-way and we have a four-way the height of the standard four-way all the way down is 10 and a half inches from the frame to the top of the wedge. The thickness of the top plate on this beam is about one inch thick. So it's a one inch eye beam and then your wedge drops down through both sides of the beam. So one inch on each side and the support bracket also drops down through and is welded all the way through. All right, again, I'm gonna do the total length and width of this machine, but this hitch I believe has been shortened or the model has changed since I got it. But on the machine that I have, with the added battery box on it, it's about nine and a half feet. So without that battery box, so your standard machine, if that tongue is correct, is about nine feet long. Then the width of this machine, not including the log lift, about 41, 42 inches wide. All right, we've got it warmed up already. I'm gonna fire it up. We'll show you how this push plate is attached to the ram. We'll show you how the wedge works, raises and lowers, and how the log lift raises and lowers. These Easton made 1222s come standard with electric start. for the wedge. That's all the way up. So all the way up on the standard four-way. And you're at 18 and a half inches. Log lift. All the way up. You can see just past horizontal to sort of help feed the logs down. I'll get the measurements on that after the machine's not running. And these come standard with full auto cycle. Like I mentioned, the wear plates on this are phenolic plates with brass inserts. These are the original wear surfaces, and this machine has over 400 hours on it. The length of the, the riding surface is 16 inches on this. You can see this attaches to the push plate differently than the Allwood and the Wolf Ridge. The ram is actually machined right into the end of this. So there's no, there's a bolt through here, but it goes right into a, I guess a full cylinder. All right, this log lift is 30 inches or 33 inches if you go to the edge of that and 18 inches wide. The foot plate is gonna be 18 inches wide and about 16 inches tall. All right, one feature with this log lift, it's free floating. So if it lands on something, it's just gonna lift. But you can also fold it up and then you can hook a strap and it gives you a narrower travel width or towing width if you're trying to put it in the bed of a truck or a trailer. It just comes down onto this wheel. All right, the weight of this machine I believe is around 2,200 pounds. You can look up the exact specs on Easton Mate's website. So as far as moving this machine around goes, by hand you can do it. I'm going to raise this leg up. So like I mentioned, this tongue is a little bit shorter than what I see other people's machines have, but I can still, I can pick this up. And you can move this thing around by hand. It's not light by any means. And if you're on gravel, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging, but definitely with two people, you can move this thing around. So 
So as far as maneuverability goes, it's, it's fairly maneuverable. You can tow this with a four-wheeler, you can tow this with a side-by-side, -side, or obviously with a tractor or a vehicle. All right, I'm gonna show you changing this wedge out real quick because we need the six-way on for our next splitter wars. So what I do, you could use this hook and either a cherry picker or a chain fall or your tractor. But I like to just jump up here Pull this one out. So it is a little bit heavier, but with everything you have trade-offs, heavy means sturdy. So you can change them by hand. They have the eye hooks if you need a machine or something to do it. And then when you raise that up, it just automatically engages it and locks it in. So there's your quick walk around to the Easton Made 1222. This is a 2019 model that I bought used off Facebook Marketplace. All right, here we go. Easton Made, all wood, dry run. Pretty much what we expected. That was a head-to-head -head battle. Six-way versus eight-way, auto cycle, non-auto cycle. And I finished just a tiny bit before her. We both had our small hiccups, but that's part of the challenge. So we're gonna get this hickory cleaned up and then we're gonna get the next round stage ready to go. And we'll see how they stack up on a, a lesser, I guess a wood that splits easier. Cause there were some of these knotty pieces where I don't know about you, but my machine had to work to get through them. I was too busy trying to get the next one and heave it up to be ready to throw it on yeah. the cradle. <laughs> but yeah, that was, I mean, we just made a lot of wood in a very short amount of time. So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll get the next round ready to go and we'll bring you right back. Yeah.
camera guy. Oh. almost cleaned up. This is all of the wood. So it's a little over a third of a cord from both machines done in no time. All right, between the two splitters, we did over a third of a cord of shag bark hickory. Probably the fastest it's ever been done on YouTube. <laughs> Right. All you need is two awesome splitters and you can split wood faster than anybody else. You ready now? You going up? Second round, 20 rounds each. We got a couple of red oak. We got a black locust and the rest is maple. I'm gonna be on the Easton Bay. Rachel's on the all wood, beating this blizzard. I forgot to take this tongue out. <laughs> I can't see anything. part of the challenge that because of the size of the logs that we're using we weighed them they were a little over 60 pounds um, I'm a smaller five foot five tall person and I have to pick up the weight of them carry it over and the height of the working the working height I guess you call it of the all wood is taller so I have to heave it up more and it just takes a little bit more energy and effort so I can't stand there and hold it like Heath did when he would do the return. I have to wait for it to go down and then hit the return back. If there was an auto cycle going on the all wood, it would be a different situation altogether. sabotaged me. Huh? I think you sabotaged me. You set the logs up. I didn't put them here. You put big giant ones far away. Oh, 
those things are heavy. Had to put everything into it to get them and lift them and dropped one because it's wet and snowy and uh, slippery. Definitely the snow has added a little something to this Winter Wars challenge. You can see the auto cycle advantage. So uh, we ran the machines differently. When I was running that one, I would pick up a log as the stroke was coming down and then I'd be standing there and then when it hit, I would push it back while the log was in my hand. Rachel ran it differently. Well, I can't pick them up. They're too heavy for no, me to do fine. that. We're just showing the differences. So uh, Operator error or... You can, no, it's just a difference in machines. But like I said, the muscle would normally come standard with auto cycle. So <sighs> if you're thinking about auto cycle or not auto, auto cycle, that's something to think about right there, so. <sighs> All right, here's the final stats from this Splitter Wars episode. The six-way wedge on the Easton made with the auto cycle. Ultimately, with the difference in operators, the Easton made split the wood in a little bit less time. It took 7.51 seconds per round and 8.27 rounds per minute. With the all wood without the auto cycle and running the eight-way wedge instead of the six-way wedge, it took just a little bit more time at 8.25 seconds per round or 7.8 rounds per minute. However, the muscle wood, because of the higher split wedge count, made 62.5 splits per minute versus 49.6 splits per minute on the Easton made. So it was a total of 35 rounds through each machine, 210 splits out of the Easton made, 280 out of the all wood. So it's not a head-to-head, -head, apples to apples comparison. It's just the best that we had. So just take that into consideration when you look at these stats and know that both of these machines are impressive and the operator does make a difference with the auto cycle or without auto cycle. All right, there it is. That was a battle just like we expected and we had a blizzard added into the mix. So I don't think that helped me any. <laughs> no, it definitely was advantage me because those logs were big and heavy and that made them slippery. So definitely you can see the difference in the operators. Um, it just is what it is. It's all part of the splitter wars. We're just showing you the machines, how they handle it. Both of these machines flew through that wood. Six way on the Easton made, eight way on the all wood, because those were our most similar wedges. And uh, each machine made it over a third of a cord. And we'll show you the times on that. It was fast. I can't even see the snow is in my eyes. So we did <laughs> over a sixth of a cord of hickory with each machine, and then over a sixth of a cord of the little bit of oak a locust and the rest of maple and it was I, we're going to be in single digits i think so you can just see these machines fly through the wood the multi-split wedges are amazing this blizzard is awesome the kids got a snowman out front and uh, we made a bunch of firewood so hope, hope you, you enjoyed it uh drop a comment let us know what you think what are your thoughts was anything unexpected what would you like to see more of what did we miss because Sometimes we forget things that we wanted to do and we just film and go, oh my gosh, we forgot. So Yeah, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> um, we're going to bring you more Splitter Wars. I've got a Timberwolf Log Splitter lined up and we've got the Battle of the Box Store Splitters lined up. So we just got to get time. We're also going to bring you the Wolf Ridge Easton Made again and the Wolf Ridge Allwood maybe. Whatever else we can get our hands on basically. Yep, or... So we're going to run as many splitters as we can. Um, a lot of this wood that we split today obviously is going to need to be resplit. Maybe I'll be able to get a hold of two resplit machines or maybe two vertical machines and try it that way. You know, we're going to look for what we can and maybe I'll find another steel to buy. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy the show. <laughs> Subscribe. Like. Show us your love. <laughs> Hit that bell icon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. Here's the walking route. Walking round, walking round. All right, here's the e Bleah!